Hello and welcome to my beginner's guide for Dwarf Fortress Adventurer Mode. This is being made with the beta version of the Adventure Mode. That means a lot of things are not activated yet, but I found for myself that the things that are available right now are just about enough to give you a good spin into the game and give you enough things to explore the world on your own with. So first off, you have to create yourself a world. How you want to do this is up to you. You can select the specifications however you want it. You create the world and as soon as it is saved, you can access it via start new game in existing world. So it will show up somewhere around here. We're going to select one world for this endeavor. This one here, it'll load up then. Depending on the size of your world, that can take a while or less. So as a rule of thumb, if you are bothered by long waiting times, I strongly recommend smaller worlds. These are still large enough to explore. So we select adventure mode and then we get to select what kind of destiny we want to pick. Since we are raw bloody beginners, we're picking up easy difficulty and the, de the destinies aren't activated yet, so I can't say much about it. Hero is the easier one compared to ordinary and chosen will be the easiest one with a full on tutorial, but for now we're working with hero and easy difficulty. So race wise, we're going to play the tutorial with the goblin race. This is because goblins do not need eat, need to eat or drink. This is really making things a lot easier. All the other species have bodily functions that they need to take care of. The goblins, they're just walking balls of evil, and that is what we're utilizing here. Feel free to pick up whatever you want, but this is, in my humble opinion, the easiest way to play adventure mode if you have no clue about what you're doing. So, we select from where they come, and if you can't select goblins, you just have to re-roll a new world, because you always get to work with what's in the world, and if there are no goblins to work with, you can't select them. So if that happens, just do yourself a new world, and roll yourself a new world, and that'll be the trick. So, we select where we come from. Next step, we can select which uh, settlement we originate from. It's not that important. You can select whatever you want. For now, we're going to, going to pick up that, an occupation that you've been following before. All these things are, for now, mostly slough. Uh, fluff. Slough. Fluff, of course. Maybe the goblins call it slough. I don't know. We're uh, picking up an occupation, whatever. It is really not that important. This is where things get important. So the distribution to have an easy life is a fighter's distribution. And here it goes. You want to put in a few points into strength and agility. Strength lets you hit harder, which is really important. Agility lets you dodge better, which is also really important. Some points into toughness and endurance to make sure that you don't keel over on the first blow. Recuperation, I think, is very, very important because if you ever get injured, you want to heal up as fast as you can because nothing's more boring than lying around. The other stats that are really good to have are Spatial Sense, that allows you to touch better, and Kinesthetic Sense, that's also for fighting. Intuition is the last thing that we pick up because Intuition is also really, really good for dodging and, well, the rest you can just uh, pick up as if you want to. This is by no means the perfect distribution, but this ends up with a pretty solid fighter. You can try and experiment around to your own liking, of course, because as you see there, I've explained what these stats are good for. Do your, uh, do your thing and have some fun with it. So over here, we have now skill points remaining. So I'm going to roll this as a swordsman because swords in Dwarf Fortress hit the sweet spot as a jack of all trades weapon. They can stab and slice. They merely lack blunt damage, but since you can't even use a pummel strike as source of blunt damage, you're not completely out of options here. But in all honesty, if you need, if you want blunt damage, you need to pick up a hammer. But all in all, swords are pretty, pretty good all-rounders. Anyways, you can't shoot whatever weapon you like. I just want to explain why I go for swords. We're going to pick up swimmer two levels and climber two levels. So we are pretty good around the world to just travel. 
Fighter is another trait that we want to have. It generally improves your fighting stats. It's uh, making you dodge more and hit better. It's really, really valuable. Then a few ranks in Shield User, Armor User, and Dodger. So the more points you can put into these, the more effective you will go. What's really important though is that you pick up at least adequate swimmer and because as far as I know that's the minimum value to, you need to be able to drain it because below that you will just drown instead of stop to drain swimming. So beyond that, well, the world is your oyster. You can pick up whatever skills you want to, to pick up. Currently in the current state of affairs there's really nothing else worth picking up because I haven't found anything. Let me know in the comment section if I'm missing anything there, because I really like to have completeness on my tutorials. So we're picking up as many points, try to spend as many points as you can, and the more points you can allocate into these combat skills, the better. Generally here, these things on the right side can be learned much faster than the stuff on the left side. Gaining attributes in Dwarf Fortress takes quite a lot of time, and therefore this is harder to learn, this is easier to learn. So we accept these, and we can now randomize how lovely we look, randomize a couple of skin colors or whatever is tickling your fancy, and then you can select what kind of personality you want to have. I just truly don't know if this has too much of an influence in the current version of the game, but well, feel free to experiment around with it and roll the goblin that you like. And then we get into the equipment screen. So the first thing that we do is that we remove copper gear because copper gear sucks. This is uh, really not good enough for us. We're going to go over into the weapons tab and here select what is the best for you. You should definitely go for short swords because you are a small, small person, so don't pick up two uh, large weapons. And iron is absolutely the lowest standard that you should pick up if available. If available, you can even consider picking up steel, although I think iron is currently pretty much the sweet spot. If you can't get iron, bronze does the job pretty well too. So we're picking up sword. That's really important. We are picking up now body wear. A male shirt and a breastplate can be worn together. That is no problem. We pick up ourselves a helmet, gauntlets, and low boots or high boots, depending on your own liking. As far as I know, they, the high boots do have a little bit more armor. And then chain leggings or greaves. I still don't know, but I think the leggings have a little bit more armor value, but uh, correct me where I stand wrong. The Dwarf Fortress combat system is a pain. So, we have now all the basics together. Since our good friend the Goblin doesn't require any food or drink, you could even remove the food from your starting package. So you can now spend the remaining points either on improving the quality of your gear by pressing these buttons here, or by hiring yourself a mount that you, or pet that you can't use. I personally would recommend you to go for the improvement on your gear as much as you uh, can stomach because quality on armor does play a big role in Dwarf Fortress, a really, really big role. If you want to experiment with animals, feel free to. There's no real best choice to go for. And uh, if you can get yourself something, I forgot one thing. I think in the body wear section, you can also pick yourself up a cloak. Ah, well, I think cloaks are a thing, yeah. Let's try that out. But uh, the layering of different gear items is a science for itself. We are here for a beginner's uh, campaign. This goes places. We're pretty well equipped here. So, accept your equipment or choose your uh, own pet if you want to. I am not that fond of this topic, so I'm going to swap it out for now. As a beginner, we're not going to pick up extra party members. We're just going to get started with our solo adventure. So, you always start in the community that you were that you're originating from. So you can now command your character with the numpad, 
make sure numlock is on and you can also command your correct character by just clicking on squares with the left mouse button so every person around you is talking as you see there you can press space button to just click away the uh, thingies there without moving yourself right click one of the inhabitants here to start conversations with people or continue the conversation so when we go into the uh, conversation menu, we enter the most intricate beast of procedural generated conversations that I've ever seen in my life. So when we reply to the greeting of this person now, you get opted out of that screen. That is a little bit weird. You have to right click again and continue the conversation. And then we can ask for a couple of things or we can start a new conversation by greeting the listener continuing the conversation and this screen here allows you to do a lot of different things first and foremostly you can ask for directions or rumors which will be added into your map you can ask for the local ruler and once it is added into you can also start trading with these people currently this is not enabled otherwise i would obviously include it into a beginner's tutorial but yeah I'll, I'll do that once it is all available, but this is also where you can't trade. You can also ask the people to join you and many, many other things. There's even fluff stuff like telling them jokes or bragging about your violent acts. Feel free to experiment around with it. Currently, the most important thing to do here are, as far as I have noticed, you can swear fealty to the local leaders. So if you ask where the local leader is, you can make, you can join the local bandits band camp, or you can try to be a performer for the local castle. All those things can be done at the local ruler and the people will give you directions there. Or you try to rack in new rumors that will help you to navigate the world. So that is that. I'm going to go over the traveling menu in a second because uh, we pretty much have covered this here. There is not that much more to know. Feel free to experiment around with this. After all, it is a sandbox game. So down here in that corner, we have our character sheet where you can find out everything about your character. And by pressing I or this backpack icon, you get to check out what you're what you're currently uh, wearing. And yeah, stuff that you pick up will have to go into a container. Otherwise, it'll block your hands from carrying a sword or a shield. So make sure that you have backpacks and stuff like that. Containers also have to be worn, so backpack is a good is a good thing to go. Don't try to go without a backpack, in my opinion, at least. So we don't have a log available yet. Movement options that is very important too. So here we set up how we are currently moving. Keep it at walking whenever you just want to casually stroll around and change it according to your situation. Sprinting when you want to run away, creeping when you want to sneak up to somebody. Just keep in mind that stuff like sprinting is really exhausting for your character and ultimately you will fall flat on the face. So we can also stand next to surfaces and uh, use the climb and uh, use the climbing uh, menu so we can hold ourselves to terrain and uh, or release the hold. I still have to experiment around what to do with that. We can look for bugs but the and we can jump. Jumping is pretty nice to have as you can see here. You can do that and here are the talking things or perform for performance things. Not necessarily important for us now. What is important is that we can here designate an attack, capital A as a hotkey, so you have to stand next to the person, press this button, and then you get asked if you really want to start a conflict with a peaceful person, we press no for now. You can also start uh, or continue active wrestling, currently not available. We can shoot with this, but here, this is really important. Here you can yield the conflict, or if you, so here we have now a submissive posture, or we turn off and turn that off can be sometimes useful if you want to try to get away with your life this is sheathing or unsheathing of your weapons and this is lying down prone or standing up 
very important whenever you have these uh, little arrows on your uh, on your uh, below your character that means you're currently lying on the ground if you just keep moving like that you'll be moving very very slow stand back up with you have if you have these arrows below you very important during fighting so speaking about fighting let's show you how that works so we strike a person by using this button and then the game asks us if whether we want to strike or wrestle wrestle is unarmed combat that is the prolonged action striking is using the weapon in your hands we're going to explain striking because wrestling is its own science so we strike we get to select where we want to attack. Aim for the normal strikes or the easy ones and especially the normal strikes that can be hit fairly solid. The more specific the body part, the more specific the impact. If you manage to destroy somebody's arm, he's not going to be able to wield a weapon anymore. If you destroy somebody's legs, he's not going to be able to stand anymore. And so on and so forth. So you can fight quite strategically and you should do that. So. We are aiming here for a lower body blow and here we can now to specify what kind of attack we want to go for and here well there is a lot of different actions that you can take personally i'd recommend you to start just with slashing and experiment your way down the ladder accordingly the beautiful part is since you're playing an evil goblin you just don't need to worry about slaughtering everybody because you're just an innately evil character so once you are in conflict with somebody you can just uh, bump into them so you can move into the character by either using the numpad or clicking on them here they we're uh, we're being uh, called that this character is already yielded we're still going to do our evil deeds nevertheless as you can see there you can either click the character in question or bump into them this guy now started running away we could have countered that by just running ourselves but since we're just doing the uh, tutorial here that is enough for now that's how combat works you can still specify each single blow during a combat instead of bumping the, into the character and technically it's always better to specify each and every move in your combat sequence bumping into the enemy is just randomly attacking something that is pretty accessible and is never the most ideal course of action so let's go traveling because we are now criminals well i don't know i think uh, currently the game is so in its in its office in its uh, office stadium that nobody really in attacked me for that but never mind so down here in the uh, corner here we have the map icon this is the travel menu capital t for the hotkey so when you click here you can see your environs but most importantly you can also travel on it if you click click the map icon here you see the currently known world you can hover over all these things to check out what they are and you'll get some information the grayed out things are rumors that you heard about but you're not really knowing about these and there's also these little caves where you can just go there and get your skull caved in because the monsters in there are quite brutal but uh, whatever you want to do here you can navigate yourself around in the world menu you can now walk around just you can walk around the rest of the world by using the numpad or just clicking wherever you want to so by using the map you can now navigate yourself let's see there's a goblin camp let's go towards there wherever you want to go some rivers can be crossed some can't and if you are far away enough from an a encampment as you see there the game zooms out even further so you can travel over the whole world map so here since goblins don't need to eat or drink you can just travel around and explore as much as you want to you can stand back from your travels everywhere where you want by just clicking there and the game will then load the current environment of yours every piece of environment can be right clicked to be interacted with you can ignite the stuff or do whatever you want to you can also pick the items up but like i said everything must go somewhere most items that you can pick up from the outside are not that useful you see you can just lick those leaves and since cooking and crafting and butchering and building are still currently not enabled you can't do much with these things that you forage in the wild nature currently the most 
appealing thing is to explore the world and try to survive as much uh, as long as you can. As a rule of thumb, this game is very simple in terms of learning. You get better at what you're doing. So if you want to be a legend that can't fight everything, you should just do a lot of fighting. And ironically enough, fighting harmless little citizens does make you better at fighting, even if you are already good at it. So, well, apart from that, I'll leave it up to your evil machinations what you want to do with your goblin. You can, with this knowledge now, fire up any other character um, class and try to do your thing. By the way, be careful early on. Goblin encampments and all those things can be quite nasty, but sometimes, as you see there, you just uh, smack people like that. The game's randomization is wild. You will kill a lot of characters before you get the hang of things, but all in all, enjoy yourself. That's the most important thing. I will hand over um, more detailed tutorials when the um, when the adventure mode is um, more completed, but well, that's that. One last thing though. Eh kill that guy. I thought he was harmless. I want to show you how you can loot stuff because we are here at a little bit of a loot site. So let's kill off that guy. Just take a while. And after a fight you can always check your health by checking the wounds and that's that. So if you are standing on something you can press G to get items out of that and currently you can get yourself a lot of items out of these bags. I'll leave it up to you to find out what you want to do, since trading is not really enabled as of yet. The only thing that this goblin really is good for is adventuring around, killing stuff, getting better at it, and finding out how everything looks from the inside. But I hope this gave you a couple of uh, inspirations on how to play the adventure mode. Up here you can always navigate around a little bit. So I hope that was helpful. Leave me your comments, leave me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, check out the description box. There's cool links down there to Patreon, Paypal and buy me a coffee. A big thanks to the supporters of the channel and a big thanks to you for watching this video. Have a wonderful day. See you soon.